I'm going to be showing you a little bit about functions and notation and a vertical line test in this video. Now a lot of students get messed up, I think, or are confused by functions, but I think it's just a matter of how it's written. So first of all, uh, let's take a look at, uh, let's say I had an equation like y equals, I don't know, uh, x plus 1. This is the type of equation you might have seen before. Now what this means is that as long as you know what x is, then you can know what y is. So for example, x here could be any number. It could be 2, let's say. If I make x 2, I know that all I have to do is add 1 to it, and that tells me what y is. So for example, if I made x 2 here, 2 plus 1, so y would be 3. Now that is just an equation. That's a set of rules. Well, in that same uh, way, we can work with functions. A function is just a set of rules. Now we write them with a different notation. So we write like this, f with a little bracket like this and put an x. And the way we say it is f of x. Now sometimes you might also see it written like this, um, f with this uh, colon here. And then you actually might write the x and like this here with a little arrow. Now this notation or this notation, it still means it's a function. Now, I remember my high school teacher, he used to insist that functions were fun. I think uh, just saying it's fun doesn't really make it fun necessarily. But uh, let's see if we can't uh, make these a little bit easier to understand at least. Now, these can be actually very, very useful. Now these uh, f of x, that's how we pronounce it, f of x. Now um, let's look at an example here. So let's look at a set of rules. Uh, so let's say I made it, um, remember like before when I had y equaled um, x plus 1? Well now I can say f of x is equal to x plus 1. That's just another way of writing it. A lot of students, as soon as they see f of x, they rewrite this with y. That's okay to do most of the time, but I don't think it's always a good idea because uh, the whole point of functions and this notation is that later on it makes things a lot simpler because you know what variable you're putting in. So that maybe you're putting in not just x, maybe you've got y's and z's and q's and weird letters going on. In that sense, then, this notation keeps things clear. Now, uh, a one way to look at what a function is, or one way to sort of imagine it, it's almost like it's some sort of machine here. Uh, now imagine you take an X and you throw that into the input of the machine. So maybe this is like the top here of some machine where you can throw something into the top. And you'd sort of have to turn the crank here and it would end up spitting out an answer. In this case, F of X. Well, in the case of X plus 1, um, I could put in, let's say I put in X equaled uh, 1, let's say. Then uh, what I could do is I could use this as an example here. So I could say, oops, I could say that uh, if I make f of x equal x plus 1, and I say, well, put in x equals 1. That's like saying f of 1. In other words, I want to find out what do I get when instead of putting an x into this equation or into this machine, I want to put in something specific. I want to put in the number 1. So you put in a 1 into this machine, turn the gears, and see what you get out. In this case, then, f of 1 is Everywhere I see an x, I just replace it with 1. So in this case, instead of x, I put in 1. But it's supposed to be 1 plus 1. Therefore, f of 1, in this case, equals 2. So that's an example of how to use uh, functions. So let's do another one. Here's another one here. f of x is equal to 3x plus 4. So what's f of 3? So in this case, what I want to do then is find out again, this is my little machine here. My machine, what it does, it turns um, x's into answers. So in this case, I want to throw in not x, but 3. So I throw in a 3 wherever I see an x, and I turn the gears, so to speak, and I see what I get. So f of 3 is going to be equal to, well, I just have to follow the rule here, 3 times something plus 4. So in this case, 3 times well, x is 3 this time, plus 4. So that gives me 9 plus 4. So that gives me 14. Oh, sorry, 13. So uh, what I do then is this is f of 3 is equal to 13. Sorry, it doesn't seem like it was able to count here. So um, f of 3 is equal to 13. Now we can do another example. 
Uh, maybe this one here looks more complicated, but it's actually the same thing. You can have any set of rules, and this is just arbitrary letter here, G, we could call it H, we can call it F, we can call it Q, it doesn't matter. And whatever's in the brackets, that tells you the variable that you're playing around with. In other words, uh, that's well, that's the thing that everything depends on. So in this sense, G of X is equal to X cubed divided by 2 plus 5X. And the question is, what is G of 2? So again, I've got my machine here, and anytime I anything I throw in, I have to cube the value that I throw in, divide that by 2, add that to 5 times the original value. So that's what I want to do is throw in a 2 here into this machine. All right, so g of 2 is going to be equal to, well, let's see now, everywhere I see an x, I replace it with a 2. So in this case, it's going to be 2 cubed divided by 2 plus 5 times, oh, I have an x again. Anytime I see x, replace it with 2. So 5 times 2. Now, I should take my time here and work on this. So 2 to the power of 3, it is not 2 times 3, which is 6. What this really represents, remember, is 2 times 2 times 2. In other words, it's 2 multiplied by itself 3 times. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So 8 over 2. Plus, and 5 times 2 is 10. So if I want to keep going then, I can say, whoops, I should be careful here. So if I keep going, then 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 plus 10, that's 14. So that's my final answer here, that g of 2 is equal to 14. Hopefully that was pretty simple. And you can do that with any old function. Now what about this vertical line test? Some teachers use this as a way to tell if something's a function. And the idea is this, that uh, maybe I'll write this in blue here just to make it different. So um, a vertical line uh, should only cross a function once. Uh, let's say across a graph of a function once. So what I mean by that, so this right here, some people call it the VLT. Basically, what this tells you is, if it only uh, crosses a function once, then it is a function. If it doesn't cross this once, then it's not considered a function. So I'll give you a little example here. Let's say I have a graph. Now this could be any old graph, y and x here. And let's say I draw mm, some sort of weird line like this. Now, no matter where I try to draw a vertical line here, if I draw one here, or if I put one here, or maybe here, or even here, notice that my line only intersects this curvy graph only one time. This line only hits it once, this line only hits it once, this line only hits it once, this only hits it once. So this, is it a function? Yes. Uh, we can do another example though. Let's do something that's maybe a uh, a little bit weirder to look at. So let's say we have an x and a y again. And this time we have, um, this is the equation actually of plus or minus square root of x. So something like this. This is a function here like this. So this is the graph. Now it's pretty obvious hopefully that if I take a vertical line and I put it let's say right here, I've crossed it once and twice. So this vertical line intersects this graph two times. So the question is, is it a function? No. Maybe I should say yes here. Okay, so the main idea behind this is that, uh, I mean, you can go into a little bit deeper uh, with this, but just for the, for our sakes for now, this is actually pretty simple and uh, this, is, this is sufficient. Basically, the idea is that there should only be one value of f of x for every given x value. That's the rule. So this right here, for example, in this first uh, example, if I gave you what x was, let's say I told you x was 13, then I could you know, look along this graph, find wherever x was 13, and I would know exactly what uh, the y value is, or the f of x value. Look over here though, this is why this is not a function, because let's pretend this corresponds to x equals two, let's say. So at x equals two, the value could be, so f of x could be this, but it could also be this. And that's why there's a problem, there's confusion. Remember, the idea behind a function is it should be a rule that given the input, it gives you g of x in this case. Or here, given the input of x, I get f of x. 
That's the main idea behind these.